So with this particular content objective that goes with 2.5, we're going to be working with continuity at prospective problem points. So the problem points are going to occur either at joints or they will occur at domain problems. So we got to remember that domain issues occur if we try to divide by zero, if we try to put non-positives in logs, or if we try to take the square root of negative numbers. So those could come into play and impact the continuity. We can also have issues with continuity at joints. So that's when we get things that look like this, where we have to jump from one piece to another. So we want to be looking at the functions and examining for joints and for domain problems. So with part A here, the question is, where are the discontinuities? So we have two different places where we're seeing some candidates. We've got a joint here at 2, and then we also see division by 0, which might cause a problem with the domain. So x equals 2 is going to be an issue for us. So we're going to write down x equals 2. Now the goal is to figure out what type of discontinuity it is. So in this case, we're going to look at the limit as x approaches that 2 to see what happens. If I look at the limit and I plug 2 in, remember I'm plugging values that are close to 2 but not equal to 2. So that means I would be in this branch and then I can use the substitution method. Plug it in, I get a 0 on the bottom. Well, that's a big problem and I've got a number on the top. So if I have a zero on the bottom and a number on the top, that's evidence of an asymptote or a, an infinite discontinuity. So because it's an asymptote, we know it's going to behave like an asymptote. I can either head toward it from the right or I can head toward it from the left and I can see whether I'm heading up or down with my y coordinates. So if I look at it on the right, coming toward the right, the branch that I'm involved in, I've got x is a little bit bigger than 2, that means I'm still in this branch. If I plug something in larger than 2, I will get a positive number and then square it, so that means I'm heading up to positive infinity. With this one, I'm again not equal to 2, I'm just a little bit less, so something smaller than 2 will not equal 2 will put me in this top branch. Something smaller than 2 minus 2 will give me a negative number, but then I square it and it becomes positive. So I again have a positive infinity. So graphically, as long as we aren't at 2, we're going to be traveling up toward that asymptote. And then here it looks like we tried to fix the problem that we saw at 2. We've tried to fix it by saying when x is 2, I'm going to let the y coordinate be 3. But notice that that one dot does not make it so that you don't have to pick up your pencil. You still have to pick up your pencil, so you still have a discontinuity, and it's an infinite discontinuity or an asymptote. With this one, it's a little different. It looks kind of the same at first glance because we have these two pieces and the joint is just a single point. So we know x equals 5 is going to be an issue for us. We've just got to figure out what type of issue. So in order to determine what type, we're going to look at the limit as we approach that 5 and see what happens. Well, if I'm approaching 5, that means I'm not equal to 5, so I would be in this top branch. The top branch if I want to try substitution method first, I'd plug in a 5 to both top and bottom and I'll get a 0 over a 0. Well, because I've got a 0 on both the top and the bottom, that's a good candidate for a whole. If we can fix that problem factor in the bottom, then we can compute the limit and it'll be the y coordinate of the whole. So to fix this problem factor on the bottom, we need to factor the top. So we'd have an x minus 5 and an x plus 1 over an x minus a 5. Well, I can see that the x minus 5's will cancel, and now I no longer have an issue with 5, which means I can plug it in, and I'll get a 5 plus 1 is a 6. So graphically, we have the behavior, as long as x doesn't equal 5, looking an awful lot like x plus 1. So I've got a y-intercept of 1, and a slope of 1, and I get to be on that line as long as I'm not at x equals 5. 
and right up here we can see that that limit as x is approaching 5 is going to be 6. So we have a hole in the graph. We have to pick up our pencil in order to jump over that hole. We've got a discontinuity at 5 that is a hole and now we're going to check to see if we plugged the hole. This says when x is 5 I want a y output of 4. So that means the function is going to assign this y output of 4 to the graph. Notice that I put that point in the wrong spot so I still have a discontinuity. With this next example, we are going to force the functions to be continuous by choosing a k so that we end up satisfying the definition of continuity at the joint. So the analytic work, I'm going to write down what you should write when you have a free response problem. The free response problems, anytime you see this word continuous, you need to illustrate that you know what that means analytically. So I want to see the definition of continuity at your prospective problem point. So that definition always looks like the limit as x approaches something of f of x has to equal f of that same thing. So what we want to look for is what candidate do we have for a discontinuity so that we can fix it. If we look here, our joint is occurring at x equals 2 and we also see a prospective problem with that division by 0 when x is 2. So we're going to be finding k so that this statement will be true. To get there, we will first look at the limit. So the limit as x approaches 2 on that function means I need to come from the left and right not equal to 2 but awfully close and we see that we're in this top branch. So I'm going to factor this top branch knowing that that x minus 2 is an issue on the bottom. If I factor I can get rid of the problem and see that the behavior of this looks just like the behavior of x minus 1 so when I plug 2 in, I will end up with a 1 coming out. Graphically, that first branch says I get to be on the graph of x minus 1 as long as x doesn't equal 2. So at 2, I have this hole. And now k needs to be chosen so that I plug the hole. So when I plug 2 in, I should get the y coordinate of that hole. So if I do that, if I set k, which is the output assigned to 2, if I let that equal 1, then I end up plugging the hole and I now can draw this without picking up my pencil. For part B, it's a little different because I don't have just a hole. Instead, since I have one branch when x is less than 2 pi and I have another branch when x is greater than or equal to 2 pi, I'm actually looking at a prospective jump discontinuity. I might have behavior on one side versus behavior on another side. So I got to make sure that this branch or this one, I guess it would be this one here, is moved so that they connect. We want to connect those two branches. So again, I'm going to write the limit as x approaches the joint on that function should equal the output of the function when I plug 2 pi in. So here's my definition of continuity that's required when I have a free response involving this word. And then I can find out what the output truly is by plugging 2 pi into the function. Notice here I'm defined for when x equals 2 pi. So when I plug 2 pi in, I get this 2 pi times k plus 2. Now let's examine the limit. We know the output already, now we want the limit. Because I need to approach that joint from both sides, in this case I'm going to have to have one limit for when x is coming from the left and another limit when x is coming from the right. So if I write that down, I approach 2 pi from the left, those would be smaller than 2 pi, so that's going to be this function, or I should say this branch, needs to equal that limit as I approach 2 pi from the right. And if I'm coming from the right, I'm working with values of x that are bigger than 2 pi, so I'm in this branch. 
because 2 pi does not cause any issues with this expression, nor does 2 pi cause any problems with this expression, I can do direct substitution and get a 2 pi squared plus the sine of 2 pi, which is 0, plus 2 equals k times a 2 pi plus a 2. And if we solve for k, we end up getting that k will equal, we we'll subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 2 pi, we'll end up with k equaling 2 pi. Therefore, we can graphically support this using a window from, say, negative 4 pi to 4 pi. And I've graphed this already. I've kind of messed around with it, so I'll let you verify that this is a good window from, say, 0 to 160. Then we end up seeing a picture that looks like this one. Notice here's that x squared plus sine x plus 2, and we cut travel here to 2 pi, and then we shift branches and get onto that linear one, which is now going to be 2 pi times x plus 2. And we see that they match up. They, they connect right here, so we don't have to pick up our pencil. With example 3 now, we want to take a function that has a discontinuity and extend it so that it becomes continuous at its problem. So we can see that at x equals 2, if I plug 2 in, I get a 0 over 0, which is evidence of a whole. So what we want to do is we want to plug the whole by choosing an appropriate output to be assigned to f of 2. So here I've got x squared minus 4 over an x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2, and then when x does equal 2, let me make that look a little better, when x does equal 2, we want to figure out what that number is so that we plug the problem. So to figure out the problem, here again we have that word continuous, and we're going to treat this like a free response type of problem. The limit as x approaches 2, which is the problem point on that function, we want it to equal the output that is assigned to 2. So to figure out what that output should be, we're going to compute the limit. Now if we want to compute the limit, we see that direct substitution doesn't work. That's why we got that 0 over 0. So to fix the problem, we are going to factor and see if we can reduce out that division by 0, which indeed we can. We see that x can now be plugged in when x is 2, and we'll get an output of 4, or a limit of 4, and that 4 needs to be the same as the output of the function when 2 is plugged in. So graphically, what we have just done is we had our original function, which behaves an awful lot like x plus 2, which has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1, and it behaves well until 2, and then we can't use this reduced form. So here we are, and then to plug the whole, we're now going to assign 2f of 2 to equal 2 comma 4, so that we plug the whole. With example 4, this is an application of the properties of limits when we are composing functions. So here we want the limit as x approaches 1 of the arc sign, and we've got issues because if I plug a 1 in, I get a 0 on bottom and a 0 on top, which is either evidence of, well actually it's evidence of a whole, but we've got to see how that whole comes out. So we're going to use the fact that when we compose nice functions, we can move the limits inside and outside with the functions. So we're going to rewrite this as an arc sine of the limit as x approaches 1 of that inside, which is a 1 minus a root x over a 1 minus x. Again, that 1 causes a problem, so to fix the problem, we're going to make a smart choice for 1 this time, as opposed to trying to factor the top. So to make that smart choice for 1, we want to create a factor of 1 minus x on the top. And the only way we're going to do that is if we can get rid of this radical. So this is where that conjugate comes into play again. So if I compute this limit, I'll have the arc sine of, notice if I multiply this out on the top, I will end up with a 1 minus x, because I can distribute, I get a 1, so then the interiors will cancel, and then a root x times a root x gives me that x negative, and on the bottom I'll have a 1 minus x with that 1 plus root x. 
Notice that the problem factor is now showing up on the top and on the bottom, so I can reduce it out and set this equal to the arc sine of 1 is no longer an issue. I plug it in, I get a 1 over 1 plus a 1 or a 1 half. So to finish this, I have to answer the question posed by this notation. This arc sine is the same as the sine inverse. So this sine inverse asks the question, what is the angle whose sine was a 1 half? So if we think about our unit circle, Sine is the y coordinate on that unit circle, so we know or should remember that that point that has the y coordinate of a half has an x coordinate of 3 halves and it comes from the angle which is pi over 6. So you have two web exam problems that I'd like you to at least think about how you would approach them and decide whether or not you will need help on them or you can try them yourself and see if they work, if you can get the answers. And then when you're done, I'd like you to describe the connection between the domain of a function and continuity for a function. And I want you to answer whether or not a function can ever be discontinuous at a point in its domain. And if it can be, when does that happen?